Good morning and welcome to another Ask Us Anything conversation series presented by the Duolingo English Test. Hello, my name is John Nesbitt and I'm your host again today. Prior to joining the Duolingo English Test, I spent the first 12 years of my career at Vanderbilt University co-chairing international admissions, recruitment, and enrollment, which is where I met our wonderful expert and guest today, Ed Bustos. Welcome, Ed. Thanks for being here today. Thank you, John. And you were a wonderful individual at that <laughs> former institution. <laughs> well, welcome. Thanks for being here today. Let me give you, a, a, audience, just a quick introduction for Ed. Ed is the Director of International Admissions at Rollins College located in Winter Park, Florida. And he's been in that role since 2009, where he's helped increase international enrollment from 4% to 10%. He's an active member in International ACAC, NAFSA, CIS, and NACAC. He was also the chair of the CIS Latin America Committee, where he led many recruitment tours throughout Latin America for universities. Previously, Mr. Bustos was the president and CEO of the Hispanic Business Initiative Fund of Florida, also known as Prospera. He's a big believer in serving the Central Florida community where he has spent his time volunteering and mentoring youth, as well as volunteering on several boards. Ed has also been recognized twice as one of the most influential Hispanics in Central Florida. And finally, fun fact, Ed was born in New York. He lived then in his parents' native Columbia for five years before moving and settling in Central Florida in 1986. So Ed, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for your time. And thanks for giving our audience a better idea of what exactly goes on when we say reading a file or reading an application. You know, John, I'm very excited and I'm curious about the questions. Hopefully I can answer all of them for you and the audience for sure. I, I think you're an old pro. I think you'll be okay here. Um, so, just call so me old, great. <laughs> well, 1986, we just started with that. So, you know, it's topical. Um, Ed, welcome again. Thank you. So let's start with this. What does What do we mean when we say reading a file? Um, I think reading a file, if you think about it, like if we think about a metaphor, it's almost like baking a cake or cookies or something. You have to have all the ingredients to have them all set. And so that would be getting all the ingredients for the cake, the cookies or whatever. It's all the ingredients of you as an individual, as an applicant, putting them all together, and that will complete a file. And then at the end, there will be a result. Hopefully, it's a good one. I like that. I like that. Yeah. And just like making a good cake or cookies, you can't get started without the sugar or the flour. And so you can't start reading a file if we don't have the grades or the essay or anything else, right? right? And, and so I what think are you all have these? to have those instructions, you know, like the recipe. You have to have those. Are, that's the checklist in a sense. Yes. Think about it like that. So what are all those ingredients? When we say uh, all those pieces, what, what do we need? What does a file need to be complete in order to actually get an admissions officer to start reading? The best thing for international, I would say it all depends because all of us and, and throughout the world as well, admissions throughout the world, everyone does a little bit differently. So I think first thing that individuals need to do is definitely visit the schools that they're applying and double checking what is needed for each one of those schools that you're applying. It would be simple if we were all the same, but that would be too easy, right? That's so right. let's make it a little bit more complicated, make you do some extra work. Uh, but I would say an application is the most important thing. And I think here in the US, uh, very common is the common application, the coalition, or institutions like myself at Rollins, we have our own application. So we treat them all the same. So that's probably the number one thing you have to have. Check to see if there's an application fee. And if there's an application fee, make sure you pay for it. Or if you need to ask for a waiver or some schools are generous enough and don't have an application fee, just like Rollins does. Um, and then uh, transcripts, I would say that's probably one of the most important things. We need your transcripts. We need to see your grades. Um, ninth, 10th, 11th, depending on where you are, 12th grade for a semester maybe. Uh, list of your activities, maybe a resume or so forth. Uh, English proficiency test, Duolingo, right? We need Duolingo English proficiency test uh, if you're coming from abroad. And then also a letter of recommendation from your counselor and maybe some other teachers and so forth. So I would say that's like the bulk of the things that we would need to try to complete. And then obviously something I forgot, SAT or ACT, but a lot of schools are now optional. Sure, sure. Okay. So what actually happens when you read a file? Are you reading through all the transcripts? You're reading the essays? You're actually you're, you're actually consuming everything that's out there? Yeah. I mean, I think for us at Rollins, the first thing we do, because obviously there's a lot of different grading scales. If we look at here in Florida, sometimes a GPA, we know that a GPA is about a 4.0. 
But sometimes you see a GPA and it's a 5.0. You're like, wait, I thought the highest you could get is a 4.0. So we bring back everything. We at Rollins recalculate, and many schools in the United States do also recalculate their GPAs uh, to form it into like what's best for them, maybe to a 4.0, mm-hmm. and look at the curriculum specifically, AP, IB, Honors, Advanced, and all that other good fun stuff. Mm-hmm. So we look at those things to recalculate. Some schools will not recalculate and just look at the GPA that's listed and go with it. Uh, But a lot of the schools that recalculate will only look at the core courses. So if you took physical education, sorry, we're not going (laughs) to take that class into consideration, sorry, uh, and things like that. So I think that's the first thing we look at your transcript. I think that's the most important thing out of the application, I would say. And then we start going through the rest of the process. Do you have an order? Do you, I know you kind of mentioned maybe starting with the transcript, but let's say after the transcript, do you run to the essay? Do you look to the teacher Rex? What's your order typically? I think my order, and, and everyone does it differently. I think this would be a fun question to ask at a, at a conference with all of us. What's the first thing you read? For me, my first impression is your grades. It's the grades of a student. That's what I really want to see. That's your trajectory, because I think that's really going to tell me um, how are you academically and can you handle my academics or our institutions? Some individuals will be completely different. They'll start with the essay mm-hmm. uh, and so forth. So everyone does it a little bit different. There's no right or wrong way. Uh, and we all use a lot of us. I mean, at Rollins, we use a very holistic approach. So yes, I do start with grades, but I'm looking at everything else to make into consideration. And it's always funny <clears throat> when you're traveling or you're talking with students The first thing they ask you, which I think us uh, admission officers hate is like, what's your SAT average? We're like, I don't even look at that. I mean, (laughs) I am optional. That's not the first thing I'm looking at, but I think in their mind, that's always the first thing that they think we look at. But I would say grades, but some people, like I said, they start with the essay. Looking back on my days in admissions, there were sometimes with school groups, maybe if we had, you know, 20, 30, the big school group, I might start with the counselor letter and, and try to use that as a distinguishing yeah. uh, factor to help me to get get through those, those uh, thick school groups. Um, so we mentioned reading applications. How many applications do in a typical reading day do you read or does the typical admissions officer read? Our goal here uh, is if we can read 30, to a wow, day, okay. that would be that would be pretty, pretty good. I mean, and then the question is how long those applications take. They can yeah. take, I would say some applications can take maybe like 10 minutes, some mm-hmm. 15, some of them even less. So it all depends on a lot of the information that you have. Uh, and just remember, we're not just reading. I mean, I'm still answering emails and there's yeah. events coming, there's visitors. And obviously if you're visiting our campus, you're my number one priority. So reading on a day, a day is not a typical eight hour day. Sometimes a, a, a day for an admission officer can start like at nine it could, and at 9 p.m. because yeah. there's a lot of things in there. And obviously we have to eat and maybe go work out and relieve some stress. <laughs> Three or four months of, of yeah, reading. Yeah, I mean, thousands of lives. start sometime in November and it could end like maybe like the last week of February, depending on how long your application deadline is. You have to balance it out. And I think also you can't just... I read like maybe 50 applications a day or it just it would be too much just because if you think about it maybe you're very excited when you're reading that very first application but imagine if you're reading number 45 and you're like oh, really yeah. this essay again or something like that so you don't want to punish those kids so i think each individual each admission officers know how long and, and how to spread it out maybe you're not reading 30 all at once spreading it out through the day sprinkling some email mm-hmm go and pick up the mail, go chat, eat lunch with some students, current students, check on them. So mix it up a little bit. I would say on a good day, probably about 30 or so. Yep. Yep. And I think that's important for the students out there to hear what Ed's talking about there is, is the mentality of an admissions officer isn't just let me read through 50, 60, 70, 100 like a machine, but let me give it the personal attention and care, recognizing that you, student from fill in the blank country, spent a lot of time and effort to put together this file. And so we in admissions want to take our time and give you due credit and not just rush through it. And so maybe and I, it's only reading 40 files today so that the next 10 tomorrow are, are your fresh four and you're, and you're eager to get in there. Cool. And, and I think you said something very key, John, we're not machines to yeah. the audience out there listening and, and students and prospective students, parents. I mean, we're just humans and mission officers. We, in the time that this is especially for the students, the time we're doing this, that you're doing this, we're actually looking into it. We're reading out. Some people sometimes like, oh, they're never going to read it. Everything you send us, we read. 
So we're really paying attention to every single detail. There you go. I love that. If we had a caption for today, everything you send, they will read. So remember that students, they will actually read it. And so if you want to take the time to write an extra paragraph about why you want to go into engineering or why you love this organization or activity or whatever it is that you want to tell the admissions about yourself, they actually will read it. Um, and so there is that big, important human element. It's, I remember in, talking at, in admissions when I used to be in that role was, yeah, you're right. People think it's like this big machine or there's just going to be a computer algorithm of like, here's who's admitted, here's who's not, your job's finished. But um, but un uh, uh, fortunately and unfortunately, that's not how it works. There is the human element. And so we want to take the time to really get into those files. So let's get into some of the, maybe the the good and the bad, what, what delights you, what is really good or positive when you're reading a file, and then maybe what are some of the things that aren't so great to see? So let me start with the bad. <laughs> <laughs> and we said we look at every single detail when we're reading these applications. And, and I think this is kind of, I'm going to give a tip to individuals here, uh, especially when you're using one of the, the common app or like a coalition, because you're just feeling it's, it's a great tool for use. Don't get me wrong. It's a great tool. But you just have to remember, especially in those essays, you have to be very generic. So it's when, and I'm pretty sure this happens, that happened to you, John, and it happened to all of our colleague friends. When you're reading an application, everything looks great. And they say, and I'm really looking forward to going to XXX. And it's not your university. You're like, <laughs> really, kid? Really? No, no. You just like, ugh. And nice. it's just, what, and those things are just paying attention. Those are details. And, and so for us officers, for me, I'm like, do I really want you here because you did not take the time? You didn't realize what you just did. So to me, you're being careless. Mm -hmm. And so do I want a careless student on campus? So, I mean, and this is first impressions. These, yep. these are first impressions. So you have to take this seriously. So I would say that spelling, oh, you guys. You know, I mean, we're not using typewriters anymore. Probably if your audience doesn't hear, you know what a typewriter is. So I just paid <laughs> myself. But there's spell check, you know, there's spell check and, and grammar checks and all of those things. So those things kind of like, kind of probably annoy us. It's our, like our pet peeves in the admission office. But then the good things, I would say, when you really, we can tell when you really took time, especially for that essay. Mm -hmm. I think that though, and for us, I think I would probably say that's probably the fun part of our, of the, of the application is the essays because they all tend to be different. Mm -hmm. So you, and I tell students, this is, I tell students when I'm traveling and when I'm meeting with them virtually and whatever form I'm meeting with them, this, I'm like, technically your application's done when you reach your senior year. If you think yeah. about it. like, you're done. Like you can't go back and change your grades from 9th, 10th, or 11th. Uh, your impressions of your teachers probably can't change much of yeah. those. You've already set that pace. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that you truly have control over is that essay. So, it, th and this is the time where I tell students, it's almost like, and I know all of you are very good at this, is telling stories because I see them with my students when they do a Snapchat or an Instagram post, you're telling a story at that point. And that's what I'm looking for. I think that's what we're all looking for. Uh, so reading these different essays, and I think for us internationally, we could be reading an application from Honduras, and then we're reading an application from Dubai. And, and so getting that mix for us, I think that's really fun. So I think that's the fun part of the application for sure, the essay. And I would say also, <clears throat> if you have interviews, getting to know who you're reading, I think that's also the fun part. Absolutely. Yeah. These, these essays, these interviews are chances for the students to, to personalize it a little bit more and to share greater detail. And, um, and I think that's, that's so true. It's the way they stand out, right? An essay from Honduras isn't probably going to read the same as a student from Dubai or from Pakistan or China or wherever else. So um, the, the, the chance for you as a student to get your voice across and share your opinion and, and go a little deeper is so good. Um, we, I think that's, that's, that's wonderful information for the essays. And, and, it, and I know students, you asked some questions about essays on, um, 
if you want to find out more information, you can go back um, to two months ago uh, via our Facebook page. You can go to our Facebook live section and see a, a conversation we have with Juan Camilo all about the short answers and the essays if you want more details on that. Um, He's, so a wrap- good one. He's a good one. He's a good yeah, one. Yeah, he, he is a good one. He is a good one. Um, so wrapping up with maybe just the last question or two, kind of some shorter questions. Do admissions officers have any power over merit scholarships or financial aid? Yes and no, <laughs> if that's the truth. But I think we can, you know, I, I, I tell students when we're reading your applications and I joke with students, I'm like, I am your lawyer. Technically, yeah. And I'm doing this for free. This is a pro bono case. So you need to give me the best light possible and everything. And I'm going to go present this to the committee. So, yeah. um, and so when it comes to merit scholarships and things like that, I mean, I think most schools will have some standards here and there. Uh, uh, and then financial aid, there's some standards there as well. But sometimes we can go talk to, let's, let's see, let's go take it back to committee to see if we can maybe increase the scholarship a little bit. Or let's go talk to financial aid if the school offers a need-based aid if you're uh, an international student, or even if you're a U.S. citizen. Let's go see yeah. if, if there anything can be done. You know. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not saying it's like a negotiation at yeah. all. I don't want to make that impression. We're not used car, car salespeople trying to negotiate, and you're negotiating, and we're going back and forth. No, but we all try to be fair. Uh, and there's some strict rules that sometimes I would say. Give it a shot. I mean, the worst answer that you can get is no. Yeah. Uh, and if you didn't ask us, the answer was going to be no anyway. Exactly. So give exactly. us a shot. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I think that's important, too, for students and families to realize out there. I think it's the, the <clears throat> power doesn't rest just with one admissions officer who read it and said, you're admitted. That's it. But you you reference committee. There, there's a process. There's a group of people who are making decisions and finalizing decisions and then going back and forth and agonizing over, is this right? Is this a class set before we before finalize? So maybe spend a moment just telling us a little bit more about what committee means. Yeah, committee. I mean, remember, I mean, we've talked about this whole recipe and everything. And I would say the committee is like, now we're going to go eat. We're going to go <laughs> eat the cake or the cookies and, and see. It was like, oh, this is a good cookie. Let's keep this one. Uh, this is not a good cookie. Let's not take this one. And that's pretty much what we're doing in committee. So we are actually sitting sometimes in a room and committee could be five individuals. It could be two individuals, three individuals. So it's a committee. I don't think one sole person sometimes has the full power, like you said, John. Yeah. Uh, but in some places you might. But when you go into committee, and I would say there's definitely committees when there's early decision. Mm-hmm. I think that's a big one where you want to tech. Uh, really have a committee and discuss things uh so the committee will vote and they're like okay uh let's file here's what it is you present the file all right is john in raise your hand john out all right john's in let's go (laughs) welcome to rollins and then perspective is so important right because we're talking about one individual officer reading maybe 30 files a day for a couple months but for another group of people to have that perspective of not just one or two, but by the thousands uh, and also regionally or internationally understanding trends, what we need to be. Um, and not to mention, of course, what, what's behind it for the decision at the school is Rollins looking to grow more humanities or more STEM programs or, or this region, this country, this, this part of the, the world, whatever that might be. And so there's all those different institutional priorities um, that, are, that are help pushing some decisions as well. Um, Last two questions, I think, uh, and these were great ones that came through social media. So thank you, students. If a university is test optional, will it hurt me to submit my SAT or ACT scores, especially for scholarship or additional opportunities? Look at the SAT or ACT average of that institution. I think that's going to be key. Uh, Look to see what their averages are. If you're within their average, definitely submit them. Definitely submit them. If you're below that average, and, and we know test scores, some individuals are very good test takers, some are not. Um, and so it, sometimes it doesn't represent who you are as an individual because we see your grades. We, we truly mm-hmm. know those are the grades, <clears throat> how you are academically. So possibly don't sum, submit them. I mean, I know when we've traveled and John knows this, when we say optional, yeah. optional means do it. Yeah. This is a little bit different, I would say, when it says optional, if your school's test optional. So I would just definitely look at to see what the averages are mm-hmm. uh, and so and go from there. If <clears throat> if definitely if you're in the high end, definitely submit them. Uh, obviously, I think schools have a lot of schools. We It's become very popular to be test optional, I would say. 
it, it's sad that it took a pandemic, but I'm glad that it happened. Uh, the good thing for us at Rollins, we've been test optional since 2008, so we were way before. So it was interesting when schools had to go test optional, and they're like, Ed, how do you do this? We're like, we've been doing this since 2008. Get with the program. Uh, so different scholarships and things. Everyone had to tweak a lot of different things. But you want to double check, am I going to be more competitive if I send my test course? Am I going to be less competitive? But obviously, if you're below the test average, don't send them. That is that is great advice. Um, and then, Ed, wrapping up, um, w- when does the reading season truly end? You start reading files in November, but, but kind of put a bow on it for us. Yeah, um, well, I, my former dean, um, he would say admission never closes, okay? So I, and I got in trouble one year because I was like, we're closed. And he was like, we're never closed. <laughs> uh, but officially, I would say like, if I want to put a bow, maybe not too tight, I would say it probably ends probably by February, by the end of February, early March, because obviously we have to send all of our decisions prior to April 1st. That's yep. that's what's holding us there prior to April first, but and then that's, and, that, and that's when the paper and the the digital I should say digital file the slate whatever system you're going to ends. But I guess it really finishes in, in August when the students move in um, and you get that's, to see the, the next class come in. That's when it truly ends. <laughs> that's when it truly ends. And the students, when the class is really here, they showed up and we can move on to the next one. Yes. Well, Ed, thanks again for your time today to educate us on what it actually takes to read a file, what the process looks like, what goes into it. Uh, best of luck with the rest of your reading season and the rest of the reading season for Rollins and your colleagues. Thanks again. Have a good day. Thanks, John. Take care, everyone. <laughs>